Durs, what the heck? You were in a um, you were in a George Harrison music video. We didn't even cover that. What was that about? Did you guys see that? Uh, it was like George this. Harrison, like I saw 50th this. anniversary or something. Lance Bangs. Lance Bangs directed a George Harrison video. Our guy Lance Bangs mm-hmm. is a homie of a homie, and my homie was one of the producers of it. Um, my boy DJ Chris Holmes, DJ uh, Chris Holmes. who just knows everybody in LA and yeah. um, socialite. He does. That's <laughs> not exactly. Uh, his one of his jobs was DJing before a Paul McCartney shows. So Which like, if you so go to cool. see Paul McCartney, very cool gig. He's the guy doing like mashup of how of um like wings. Beatles songs that come together yeah wings all that I just recently uh, got into listening to some of the Beatles they're they're pretty good oh yeah, dude yeah they but had a handful of songs did you guys George, watch the did George you Harrison the fucking... uh yeah, the yeah. the documentary yeah it was it was super boring <laughs> no that shit was I, t- I didn't so get through good. it so I didn't it, it was it was way it was interesting <laughs> way long and boring it was the best it was interesting. It was just how I fucking love that. Thing. It made me go like I could be the Beatles, right? I, well, I'm that's not what Beatles. I took away from it. I was just like, I think if you have any sort of interest in the Beatles, it's interesting because they are arguably the greatest band, most prolific band of all time. And right. if you have any interest in music, this is a great. Song. I got my mind. Good song. Is this, song. Is yeah. this the best song that any member right, of the Beatles has off. ever done? <laughs> No, seconds, but bro. it's like it's <laughs> this it verse. It's this verse, just over and over again. And yeah, by the way, um, so anyway, Blake, Blake, yeah, I did a video. Go ahead. Well, I was saying that if you don't have any interest in music and you don't care for the Beatles, it's not like an interesting documentary where you learn anything. It's like you're just watching the greatest band ever just exist yeah. in a room. That's what I thought it, was, that so was beautiful was cool. about it. That they was were just beautiful. Dudes. Yeah, it was like you just watch them pull these songs out of thin air. That's like, like one part. That's fantastic. And then you also see how much fun they're having too, which is this is an era in their history where oh, people oh, is it's covered in darkness. Oh. So it was like they were breaking up and all that shit, but really they were there were awesome moments where they were having fun creating together. But, but you have to wait through 9 hours of it. Exactly. It was too long. <laughs> Adam shut up. Didn't matter. <laughs> I could have watched it forever. I, I, I thought it was too, too long, but also yeah. uh it was kind of cool watching them, uh, the, like seeing how hard they worked. It yeah, wasn't man. like like when There's we no get together phones. and we're writing something together, we're developing a project together. We get together. Let's say we have four hours. Mm-hmm. We bullshit for two and a half hours, mm-hmm. work for one hour, and then mm-hmm. bullshit for another thirty minutes. When they like, we're good time guys. Literally, they would get there and they they were working and just talking music for. 10 hours straight every day. I mean, it's truly because they have no distractions like other than each other. Like they're stuck in this room. You can't look down on your phone, check Twitter or whatever. You're just fucking in a fucking box together. Yeah, but we wouldn't we would kind of have a no phones rule in the writers room of workaholics. It, not it, like a not like a hard fast rule, but it'd be like mm, maybe don't be on your phone while we're trying to break the story. And we yeah. would still just bull, bullshit about yeah. aerobies from the 90s. Mission drift. It reminded me of the Workaholics writer's room or in any writer's room, really. It was kind of like reminiscent of that, where it's just like watching the creative process is truly something fucking sweet, dude, when it works. Yeah, it, yeah I do agree. I did like that about it, but I was just like, oh, I don't know if I need like nine hours of it. Like my, what would my mom take? What would my mom take away from that documentary? She would probably be like Snoozeville 97. Well, it's not informational. You're right. You're just absorbing it. You're just absorbing it. You are just kind of absorbing footage and watching them. Well, let's, I, I got to hear more about Blake's mom not absorbing this. See, I, I don't want to, I want to watch like, uh, I feel like your mom is the generation to actually enjoy it. She like my generation, I want to. I want to hear what like Meg the Stallion's creative process is. Yeah. What is or like in? what is what is Chingy's like? What did he go through? <laughs> exactly. What did Chingy <laughs> when he's go doing through? Right there. What was his? Yeah. Head what state? was? Where was Chingy at when he was? Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Where was Hurricane I, Chris walking it out? Would we like the way he did that right there? Right there. Yeah. Uh, What's see, up with Jake? And I guess that's why I, I was like, I'm not. I I like really only know that one George Harrison song. Yes, that would be very weird. If you don't know the Beatles catalog, then when they make up this iconic sh- song, you're not going like, holy shit, that's when Paul made up that song. But you're like, this could be. It, well, it, it it was inspiring in the way that like a lot of them started off like real shitty. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, yeah, like I guess if you do work super hard at something, you can make it uh, much better. Because when they first started, you're like. Well, yeah, but that's everything. Exactly. What's the song that you actually like? Like, you see a lot of songs, but the one that you see, like, coming together is, like, when he's, like, uh, banging on the fucking guitar, and then he yeah, all of a sudden um, is like, Jojo is a man, and, and, yeah. and he just is over and over. Get and back. You see him, uh, get, get back. back. Yeah. It's fucking sweet, dude. But that's why Paul's the freaking best, dude. I quit when they were like, we can't record in here. The acoustics aren't good. We got to go. And I turned it off. I love their dynamic, bro. Paul was in the studio always. Always in the studio. Ringo, first to come in after that. Then George. But George was kind of like, yo, I don't know why I'm here. One foot in, one foot out. And then John would show up. And that was how they did it every day. With with Yoko. And Yoko fucking sat there every moment. That's yeah, kind of weird. Look, What's the look. verdict on her after watching the documentary? Because ev- obviously everyone always said she broke up the Beatles. What's the verdict? I don't think she broke up the Beatles at all. No. there was. Dy- Do you guys fuck with Yoko? Have you listened to her music? Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It's sick. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. She's she cool. She's swing. a good artist. She was like radical, man. It- um I don't think she broke them up. I think they had other dynamics. They all look at the music they made afterwards. They all just had shit to get out. Yeah, for they sure. They needed to get shit out and they were tired of discussing it with each other. That's yeah. all it is. Are we still talking about Are we still talking about the Beatles, Kyle? George had his George had his <laughs> mind set on us. He had to direct um <laughs> Well, Ringo was See making ya. a movie. Ringo was like, hey, I got to get done with this because I got the movie, The Magic Christian. And he was hungover. Because uh, he was producing. Yeah. They were all getting dipping toes. And is it true R- Ringo's first like solo album outsold Paul McCartney's first solo album, I think? Something like that? Where you're really? like, huh? Dude, after I watched the documentary, I'm like, because I fell in love with Ringo through the doc. I'm like, Ringo, I never have liked Ringo. But after seeing that, I'm like, he's my well, he had two normal legs, which we know you need. Yeah. Fucking guy. All right, chill. So I was like, dude, I'm gonna <laughs> like, didn't like that. I'm like, I'm gonna check out his music because maybe I was just being harsh. The dude's pretty cool. Dude, his solo album sucks. Yeah, it's They're not very so good. Bad. Ringo. 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 But yes. it was a bigger Terrible. hit for some reason than the first like Wing- Wings album. Oh man, it's like it's so bad. And I love Ringo and that that those albums are just not very good. But George is good. I thought uh, George rocks. I thought yeah. uh, Paul was kind of just like the pretty boy of the group. Because I know he was known as like the cute one. So I didn't think he was like the creative force. And and then watching the documentary, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that he was like yeah, so about his business. He's the Yeah, he's the guy who's about the business. He's the guy who churns out like the hits that are catchy that you're like, oh, my God, this is such a good song. And then John is the guy who's like, actually, my song's about more. Yeah, sure. And like it's still bro. good. And yeah. it's yeah. got more wit. Like John came with like just the hard hitting wit to it mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah. He was a, he was deep. He was deep, bro. You know that uh that I thought that just coming back to the the George Harrison video that my boy was in playing uh playing a, a freaking like MIB. Yeah, Jersey. Congrats. I the, I thought that that shit was kind of <laughs> sick and it's like okay, that's tight. They're making a video hella years later for this dude, but the right. only gripe and I'll say okay. it here. Uh-oh. I got one Go I got off. one thing. Go off I did queen. not understand why they felt the need to put John Hamm's voice over George's <laughs> fucking what? song. His Burn. voice yeah, his voice pops through in that and he's like we're sending a lot of uh we're sending a bunch of people in black ties and white shirts to help agents. I did not understand it after so many I years. I haven't watched it. I was kidding. <laughs> Dude, I, it was I, so I, I didn't even know like, about this. I'm excited yeah. to watch it. When did you do this? I don't know. Uh a few a few months ago. I think it was right when I left to go film with you Adam because Durs kind of hit me up like, "I uh, want to do this in and Atlanta." I was like, I have to go to Atlanta. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. They um they just basically got together a bunch of people who they knew to be in it, and it was like, "Oh fuck, I'm down." George Harrison, this song, it's a fucking good song. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got to kick it with the three Debras. 
Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, those girls are cool. Super yeah, funny. Really I think, Adam, you worked with... Um, uh, Sandra, is that right? Yeah, the, exactly. the, the shorter one? Yeah, she's right. really funny. Uh, right. We they, worked on uh, Isn't It Romantic together. They reminded me of us. Really? Cause they're like, yeah, because they're like homies who created something together. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, they're and, very and, funny. And, the and they talk numbers. about porno <laughs> constantly. <laughs> so I was like, you guys remind me of my guys. <laughs> <laughs>